Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I like to do is uh, kind of go over what exactly are the things you're going to need to know to be able to graph absolute value inequalities. Now the major thing is you have to be able to know how to graph an absolute value equation because basically an absolute value inequality is the exact same thing as the equation but rather than having it be an equal you're going to have an inequality which we're going to have some shading and we're going to have to use some testing. But the basic shape and everything else is knowing how to graph an absolute value equation. So you have to be able to know how to do that. Now. The next thing is being able to test the equation. Now, we can kind of get around this, but it's very important when you're dealing with an absolute value equation to understand the difference between less than, or less than or equal to, and less than, and greater than, and greater than or equal to. Now, we will learn how to test, but I think it's very important to understand that um, when we're dealing with you know, less than and greater than, when we were dealing with one variable inequalities, those had you know, what we called closed points, correct? Well, and now those are going to produce solid lines for us, where when we had less than or greater than, those were what we call open points. And now those, I'm just going to kind of do some, those are going to produce dashed lines. Because what's important for when testing the equation, and we're going to you know, learn how to test them, but when you have an equation, um, I, I'm not going to make an absolute value uh, problem up, but we need to make sure we can know how to test the equation. And what to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to choose a point that is on the equation. Now this is obviously the easiest way to determine if it's dashed or if it's solid. But you can always verify your answer by taking a point that lies on your equation or lies on your graph and then plug those points, the coordinates, the x and y coordinates in for the x and y variables of your equation. And if it makes the inequality true, then that point is a part of your solution and therefore your graph should be solid. And if it makes it false, then it's not a part of your solution are not a part of your inequality and therefore it will be dashed. The next thing, is the most important thing also is test points. Now, when choosing test points, um, or how to test points, let's say we have a graph that looks like this, or something here. Now we need to choose a test point, right? And to choose a test point, you always, the easiest test point to always choose is 0, 0. And the reason why is because if I had an equation here, you know, y equals 3 times x minus 1 plus 4, it's easiest to determine, oops, let's do less than. Um, if I want to choose a test point, you want to choose a test point that not, doesn't lie in line. Because usually you're going to be able to test, you know, if a point, if it's dashed or solid, just based on what these graphs, just based on what the inequality sign is. But then we need to determine, well, what about the points below or above the graph? Are those, are those going to be true, or are those going to be a part of your solution or not? So to do that, we can choose our test points. Like, for instance, I have the point 0, 0. So to test 0, 0, I'll just plug in a 0 for my x coordinate and my y coordinate. And if it makes my inequality true, then that's where I'm going to shade. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 plus 4 is 7. So 0 is, greater, is less than or equal to 7, which is true. So when it's true, you shade all the other points to the outside. If it was false, then we'd shade above. Sometimes the problem comes in, though, when we have a graph on 0, 0. Well, now we don't want to test it because um, then we're testing the line and not the graph. So we want to make sure we choose another point. And you could choose the point 0, 1 because that is not on the line. Then you'd plug the same thing, 0 in for x and y, 1 in for y. But I kind of got a little off track. That is pretty much basically what you need to know to be able to uh, graph absolute value inequalities. Thanks.